Yeah, we fi we fix that. All right, all right. Even though, even like, though the like bomb screws up, bomb screws up, needed, utterly needed, so it can be pretty so small. Can be pretty small. <laughs> yeah, we got a good. Yeah, we got a good place for it. I do like one. I do like one menu, menu on it, it, and that's it. <laughs> I guess so. uh, uh, you are, are good to count down and count down any time. Kirby, you still there? Kirby, you still there? Yep. Yep. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Y'all good. Y'all good. Hey. Hey. Fucking chair, there we go. Chair, there we go. Alright, okay. right. sorry, sorry. And, and, uh, three, uh, three, two, two, one, one, go. Duck, duck. Yeah, yeah. So this is Mega Man so DX7. Where we're playing the one, we're playing one of two characters, which, two characters is which is Ash. I will get into the big difference. Oh, there's an echo right now. There's an echo. There's an echo. I don't, know, it's probably, I don't know if it's me or, or what. But, uh, but, uh. So, I don't hear it. So I don't hear it. Yeah, I don't hear it. Yeah, I don't hear it as well. Um, I think your mic, think is, your echoing. mic is echoing. Like, there's, there's, there's two, two inputs, inputs, for, your inputs for, your for your mic somewhere. Uh, there's. Uh, there's, there's oh, oh, my stream. Yeah, just a minute. Let me get to the cutscene. Let me get to the cutscene of that and fix that. Alright, I think I think we figured out the the echo thing. I think you need to unmute your mic on the stream again. It was on our end, was the echo. Yeah. So I'm a mute now. Okay, so when you hold a charge input for any like charge shot or uh, weapon smash, as you air a boss cutscene, if you undo your button the second that the cutscene ends, you automatically do the shot frame perfectly. So that was Buckfire. Oh, pretty pretty simple boss. We'll find him again later in the boss rush. So, what's coming up now is we're going to show the special ability that Axel has from uh, X, which is we can copy data and turn them to the boss. So that is the gist of this whole run, is we'll be using a lot of boss data and not be using X as much as, I mean A as much as uh, ZX is used in the ZX game. Now, unfortunately, unlike in ZX that you can kind of stay in whatever armor mode you were in during that game for cutscenes, you cannot do that in this game, however. So you have to switch back to A for every cutscene, which is a little annoying. A is generally pretty mobile for the most part, at least in early game, from my understanding. Yeah, the only person that out at first. yeah the only person that outspeeds A is Buckfire. Oh, so in this case, it's kind of annoying. Yeah, uh, we don't use Buckfire too often though, since uh, it takes a good three seconds every time you do a transformation. 
And since every time for a cutscene you have to transform back to A, you know, it's not really worth it all the time to debug fire. So what you saw me there doing is I was holding the homie attack shot button while going up on a wall. It reduces the knockback from when you do a wall jump. So it just makes wall jumping vertical slopes a lot faster. So we're going up to the next area, which is called Control Tower. It's a vertical climb, which is one of the reasons why we don't use Buckfire, because he's awful at vertical climbing. And I missed the shot there, but it's okay. And so, we'll also be coming up on the first mini-boss of the game, which is a boss of pure RNG called Neo Spider. At least that's what the anime calls him. I don't know what they actually call him in the game. And he can be a little bit of a troll way on you get health, safety shrouds and whatnot. He can be a little bit of a troll, because he can go and hang up at the top of the ceiling the whole time. Which for Ash isn't a big deal, since I can just ricochet the charge shot all the way up to the top. But if you're playing Gray, it makes the fight a lot longer. So, as, as I said earlier during Buckfire, if I hold, if I release the Weapon Smash right now, the second that Ash gets a control back, I can immediately do the, uh, unleash the attack frame perfectly. Okay, I had good RNG. <laughs> He's kind of being a dick now. There we go. So that was an average spider mini boss. Something to note is that this game is generally not really level structured like a lot of Mega Man games. It's kind of more like a Metroidvania style game, similarly to Mega Man ZX. So you're kind of left open to explore your own areas, and then you reach whatever next area you happen to explore is kind of like the next story trigger and you get to unlock the ability to explore more areas as you get more bio metals. Yes. Now there are, in this uh, game just like in ZX there is a key card system that there's certain doors you can only get through after you like uh, complete certain sections of the story. So for this one, one of the cutscenes I skipped earlier I got the red key card which let me c come here to Rose Park in the next boss as well. Now, Rose Park can be a little bit of a troll, depending on what he, RNG he gives you. So far, I've gotten pretty good RNG out of him. That was about average. I did end up taking a hit, but I'm okay. So, as you can see in the description, the category is Beginner Ash. So there's three difficulty settings in this game. There's Beginner, there's Normal, and there's Expert. So Normal and Expert function how a normal Me Mega Man game does. If you, fall out, if you fall into a hole, you die instantly. If you hit spikes, you die instantly. In Beginner, however, when you hit spikes or fall into a hole, you first take four, uh, four points of damage. Spikes, you can keep taking that until you die. If you fall into a hole again after taking damage, you actually instantly die. You only get one chance with it. So you saw just right there, I skipped a section that would have used Rose Park to uh, traverse, just by taking some damage and going through it. Now, of course, like, like ZX and... Uh, and I believe the Zero series, every time you go to a save station, you heal up, and you can teleport around to other sections. That's correct. So, now we're going to backtrack and go to uh, Chrono Force, which, if anybody's ever watched my stream before, or pretty much any ZX runner in general, ZXA runner, Chrono Force is one of the toughest bosses in this game, just because a section of his body is actually immune to all damage, so you have to aim precisely. Also, this is the first game that uh, really has bad ice physics, as you saw right there. So, this game is notorious for dropping inputs. And add that with ice physics, and it's not good at all. But thankfully, I've actually started finding some pixels and uh, backup strats to jump on. So right there, that's a horrible situation right at the end. That uh, could have cost me a lot of time if I fell underneath. But thankfully, I landed on, like, I think it's a 5 pixel wide box. So, it's enough to make a difference, but it's also really close to the hitbox of the enemy as well. So, I don't know the name of this mini-boss, but he's not really that hard, even though some people fight him in really weird ways. Like, there, he's kind of dead. Buckfire generally excels at the current moment, attacking somewhat diagonally up and down, as you can tell. The, the A armor kind of is weak to that unless you ricochet something. So yeah. it's A is really it's hard. Yeah. A is really good at focusing like when you have a certain point to focus down, Buckfire is good at just like everything in this general section is gonna take some damage somehow. 
And, and then as you can tell, the fire biometal lets him break through ice, of course. Yes. Also, Buckfire is one of the few uh, boss forms that is not does not take any move, movement speed penalties underwater. If I was using A right now, I'd be moving very slowly. So in the in this little section of the map, I have to go and break four generators. They're all behind ice walls, so you can sometimes not remember exactly where they are, and especially on the casual playthrough, you can kind of just skip one by accident and have to backtrack a lot. So you, as, you'll also see that I'm not using Buck's Fire's uh, dive kick in certain locations. His dive kick is not consistent for hitting all these ice blocks, especially right here in this section, so I opt to shoot for it. A lot of runners will try to go and actually go for the dive kick, but I am not a fan of it. No, wait, I'm also taking a little bit safer strats with everything. I don't, there's a lot of uh, RT, RTA strats that are really... Uh, well, they are a lot faster, they're a lot more dangerous to do as well. And uh, one of which is, during every boss fight, you can use the homing shot, and it doesn't put them into invincibility frames. So you can then do a charge stri shot straight into that for some extra damage. I am not good at that, because it actually takes a lot of... Uh, it's really hard to do on the DS card uh, capture, For I feel like. I feel like I can do it better on controller. So right now I'm just not doing it, but I ha kind of have to now the PB. So, so here's Chrono Force. Uh, pretty much his bottom section is the only thing that's visible, and I just got really bad RNG with him doing the Chrono uh, Chrono Shot Blast. So now he moves like infinitely faster. Which is very unfortunate and costs me a little bit of time. And he did again! Wow! This is... I have not seen this before, actually. God. This is weird. But I still... I kind of handled it, so... So this is the bullshit about Chrono Force, though. You can get these just horrible time wastes. <laughs> And Chrono Force once again trolls me so much. <laughs> so now that we've been both Rose Park and Buck and Chrono Force, using their abilities, we unlock the next section, which is for the main quest wise, it's supposed to be going to this downed airship to get parts for the train, which I was on formerly, to get to Legion HQ. So using the new newly acquired abilities that we have, we have to go and unlock the route. Thing. So with uh, Buckfire, when he does a drop kick, if you can leave one block fine, he'll actually hit that and it will negate him out of the rest of that his uh, jump attack. Of course, I missed that there, as you saw when I dive, dove kick straight into the water. The nice thing about the Chrono Transformation is, as Gadra said earlier, he's completely invincible to things from above, and that applies when you actually transform into him, and you're completely immune to spikes from above as well. Yes. So That's any really cool ability. Yeah, any ability that the boss has had, you do keep as well. Like any anything that you saw Chrono Force do, you can do as well once you get his form. Unlike some other games that will sometimes nerf when you get a boss ability, you can do anything that the boss does. So now my health is really low for this section, and I actually need to. Uh, jump into the the pit to skip a giant rope section. So I'm gonna try to kill some enemies to get some health, but so far I am getting nothing. And this is not good. I have enough health to do the skip still, but I'm gonna have to safety save before the next boss. Oh, there's some health. All right. So now we're good. I can take one hit from the next boss though, and that's it. So that's gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of safer strats on Atlas. So right here is the snake, snake Mini boss that you might be familiar with from ZX series, but he functions a little differently. So he doesn't move at all, and he has the ability to freeze you in place, but thankfully I transformed during it, and you can avoid that freeze. Oh, he gave me some good RNG there at the end by getting lower. And so... So now we're in the uh, a Egg Carrier like the first... Uh, 
Did I say egg carrier? <laughs> air carrier. Yep, you did. Yeah, wow. I got Sonic on the mind. Oh, we're in the air carrier like the fir first game, ZX, is main base. I'm pretty sure this isn't the original one from ZX, but it's just one of it's one of many that crashed. And we're going to scrapage parts in here. But first we have to locate a team of these soldiers that got lost for some reason. Don't know why. <laughs> they, they literally never explain it to you. They're just in here, and you have to find them all. <laughs> so, uh, energy crystals are kind of a form of currency, but I'm assuming in beginner mode you never have to worry about it, right? You don't have to in any difficulty, actually. There's oh, like, really? Because I no thought point the portals would cost energy crystals. Oh, I got the vine! Okay, so right there's a tricky little thing that you can do with Rose Park. If you charge up his electric vine, and while you're in the midair, you can rotate him to go from left to right and be able to hit both generators at the same time. It's... A really hard thing to do, actually. A lot of people miss it. Okay, so now that we've rescued everybody, we can go past this guy and go fight Atlas, who uses model... Uh, F? Yeah, model F from ZX. I used to know all the models, and now I don't anymore because of this game, because all of them have names. Okay, let's see what RNG cycle I get from her. Okay, so... Okay, good RNG. Pretty good fight. So, pretty much the story behind why, why all the mod the models are back in other people's hands. Uh, the best way to point it is Pandora and... Oh, uh, God, what's the other guy's name? Prometheus. They ended up stealing back the, the other models from ZX, and then they found replicoids that they brainwashed. And so they gave them to them to help them find the rest of Model W after after uh, the events of ZX. I want to remember Model W is kind of like the ultimate armor. Yes, it's actually, yeah. technically it's the spirit and mind of Dr. Wily. So that's why it possesses whoever starts trying to wield it. So could you explain how the weapon energy works in this game? So in this game, weapon energy recharges over time, but everybody's special ability uses it. So for for a good example, every time you see me do the giant like cube uh, weapon crush ability that A does, that uses my whole entire weapon energy immediately. But it recharges at the rate of one bar per second. So by the time you usually beat a boss, you can get it back. But A is the only person that fully uses the bar with the ability. The next person that uses the majority of the bar is Chrono Force with his time freeze. It uses about, I, I want to say about two-thirds of the bar. I haven't really mapped it out exactly, which I need to for, uh, as, as you'll see at the end of the game, it actually comes into play. So, right here we can actually skip him, but we don't have to be on the elevator, it goes no matter what, but I got hit and fell in, so, yeah, now I have to kind of not take as much damage. So we're going to Legion HQ now, but we'll have another, mini, uh, another boss on the, along the way. He uses Model P from ZX, but his name is Shinnok. He uh, is actually quite annoying, because what they decide to do in this game is give Model uh, P's Blade Barrier ability uh, the ability to actually absorb shots, but without losing any of the blades. So it makes the fight a little bit longer and drawn out, and the fact that he can actually block Giga Crush. So, you'll see coming up that Giga Crush won't do the full damage that you've been noticing on most bosses so far. Yeah, Model PX was completely useless in ZX, even casually speaking. It's pretty much worthless, but they really buffed it up in this game. Yeah, he's, actu he's actually helpful, and, you'll, and I'll use him in three sages. Uh, four sa yeah, three sages. So, I got pretty bad robot RNG here, unfortunately, and you have to really hope that... Uh, they, they aren't sitting right at the edges of each platform when you're trying to jump up, but sometimes they are, and you just have to deal with it. So here's Model P, and as you can see right there, he actually started absorbing Giga Crush. But if you're quick enough, you can actually shoot him twice every, in every phase. But you have to really start the shot off before he leaves. Oh, I missed a shot. There we go. So that's, so that's Shinnok. Okay, Iki is correcting me in chat. Mall W is from Dr. Wells. From the Zero series. Okay. 
No, it, like, I actually haven't re uh, researched into a lot of this stuff. It was mostly, like, I watched the anime, which there is an anime for this sh uh, game. It's really good. And I was, I thought I remembered them saying Wily, but probably was wrong. It's been a while since I've watched it. So this is kind of an area to show up kind of as a tutorial for Model PX, where he can grab onto ledges and also see in the dark pretty well. Do you see here? Yeah. So, everybody might recognize this bug boss back from uh, Mega Man X. He constantly actually comes into ZX series as a mini boss, which is pretty nice. Also got the uh, ledge jump there. If you go all the way to the very end of that ledge and jump across, you can barely make it to the other side without having to fall into the pit. So I am actually not in a good health range for this area, and I'm gonna hope I can get some health drops somewhere, even though I'm probably not. Ugh, I'm just gonna ride this. And I died. Okay. It happens. Yeah, thankfully, even after doing that, they put you where the main boss was, so you don't go all the way back. Now, this is also a good example of why you don't change back after uh, stuff like that, because it's still it would be another three second time way, so I just stick with A afterwards. Oh, but it's kind of weird because A doesn't have as A's jump height is actually a little bit different than uh, P's, and I'm kind of used to using using him for this whole area. Also, also, yeah, you can shoot through walls if you're right up against them. That's that's a fun thing. All right, so that's the end of this. Okay, so in this room coming up, the final boss will be in it. Guess who it is? Okay, this cutscene's already over. Just to give a hint, it's the guy that's no longer in the room anymore. <laughs> it's he's like some kind of chancellor guy or something like that, right? Oh uh, yes, he is Al He is Albert, who says he created all the uh, a majority of the bio, bio metals. Uh, it's also alluded to that uh, that Ash is his descendant. They don't really specify that much into it, but that's what they just keep saying all the time. So now after this, they give us the task of going and trying to retrieve... Uh, oh god, there's not a cutscene there. Going and trying to retrieve pieces of Model W. So there's four zones that we go into, and this first one has uh, Model H, which is now known as Aeolus in this game. And of course his whole area is a wind theme, so it's kind of... You have to deal with the with tornadoes that are spawning everywhere and the wind pushing you away. Okay, cool. Didn't get hit by that parasite thing up there. So this next room will start showing off where tornadoes are gonna spawn. The, the wind's gonna start pushing me in different directions. Unfortunately for the wind, there is no tell whatsoever when it starts blowing. It just does. So you just have to be prepared for it. Is it just random? Uh, it's not random, there is like a time for it, but there's no tell when it starts up. It just starts it just starts pulling you to the side. Oh, there's no visual indicator yeah, of it. Yeah, none okay. at all. Until, you, until it just starts happening and pulling you. Now, Aeolus that isn't that hard of a boss, thankfully. You just have to hope he gives you good movement. And comes either comes close to you and doesn't do his charge attack that often. So I believe I made the good cycle here with the tornado. Yep. So that keeps your speed in the air with that tornado while be avoiding just a whole uh, mess of enemies and jumping. Dang, I thought I was gonna make it through there. Okay, so Aeolus is coming up. Right. And as you can see in the background, there's a double, uh, Model W piece right there. Okay, so far I'm getting some pretty good RNG. So all his his aerial slice actually absorbs shots, just like his tornado will as well. But thankfully, I only got one tornado, so it was a very good fight. The model H is really overpowered in ZX and was easily like the best metal biometa ever. It got pretty heavily nerfed in this game. 
kind of the opposite of what happened to PX. Although it's still a really good biometal. Yeah, in it's. Oh. Uh, normal. Most of the runners, you won't see them use it that often. You'll see me use him uh, one extra time outside the normal section we do it. Mostly as a backup strat if I can't get the wall jumping with uh, Buckfire the word. Right, because like Model Ajax has the ability to basically do a double jump and or an air dash, so it's really valuable in the air, but yeah. in terms of combat, it's been really heavily nerfed in this game. Yeah, sabers are not as good as they used to be, except for when uh, later on we'll get a model, which I'm going to kind of keep hidden for the people that don't know this game. Uh, they have a, a, a saber that actually has a very broken move with it, and we'll use that for the rest of the bosses once we get it. So, for people that know what Model F does or what Aeolus does in this game, you can shoot straight up, making this mini boss extremely trivial. <laughs> also, Sid, uh, Highway is the only area to actually have two mini bosses, both of which we use Atlas for as well. Let's see. Okay, right, now I got three, uh, no, uh, Center positions, that's not bad. One more, what I remember, this model also has the ability to punch things out of the way. Yes. I'm not sure how applicable that is in a run, though. But uh, There is plenty of objects we actually have to destroy with, oh, okay. uh, with Atlas. Also, Atlas can go in and manipulate, and you can reprogram the shot trajectory. That will actually be playing a key role later on with one, with one specific boss. Oh, I did not mean to jump there. I meant to slide off. Oh well. Okay, so here's the next mini boss. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna immediately turn into Chrono Force, and we're gonna time stop. So this lets us get on a good cycle with its blades, so, so we can keep shooting it with Atlas. So we'll switch to Atlas, and we'll just hopefully get two cycle on it. Yeah, I matched good enough. And then we'll move back to A because. Transforming outside of cutscenes is actually faster than having the, the transformation happen in cutscene. So, it only saves like a second, maybe even less, but it is faster. So up next we have Thetis, which is Model L from the ZX series. And this whole fight is underwater, so... It's actually a kind of a difficult fight when you do it casually. He's a little bit of a dick. And yes, he's also a he, even though he's using the equivalent of a female armor. That's That was a good fight. Also, Atlas is a she, just by the way. <laughs> a lot of people think Atlas is a dude when they play this game, but Atlas is actually a woman. So what you can see there is a little bit of movement tech with Thetis. Every time you do a uh, attack with a saber, it pushes you forward a little bit, so I can immediately push myself back into the wall and go into another wall jump. So next is Scrapyard, which is tech is like the maze of this game. And it's not really that hard, but it's the it's another area where you'll see Stanok and uh, Aeolus being used. Because there will be a lot of levers that uh, Shinnok will have to grab on that will open doors. And then Aeolus can actually skip par parts of this area. And at the end of this is a boss called Voltron. Even though his name doesn't look it, it is pronounced Voltron from what I've been told. And he is actually a really fun boss. Hopefully I will be able to get the op optimal fight on him. So the neat thing about those levers is you can actually stand on them. Which will be used later uh, with a little skip coming up that will skip uh, a good chunk of a rail section. Never not get hit by that guy. So you'll see coming up why this is considered the maze section for most uh, beginners in this game. So there's three doors right here. One of them goes to the right area, one of them goes to just some empty room, and another one puts you into a trash receptacle that takes forever. So there's actually a color difference in them. Unfortunately, it's based in reds, which I can't see, because I am red-green colorblind. 
So for me, for the longest time, I didn't know which door to go through <laughs> until I actually had to watch a speed run. And then that was a little little extra jump that I was talking about using that the the switch platform. This area kind of reminds me of the 100% TAS I watched a few years back, which, by the way, is a really entertaining watch. And you see the TAS use a lot of barrier skills to pretty much jump through all the trash instead of waiting it out. And it's really entertaining. So I highly recommend watching that if you have the chance. So there's the first skip that Aeolus can do. You're supposed to trigger a block there and ride it up to the top, but Aeolus can just jump straight up with an air dash. So there'll be another one coming, uh, coming up here in a bit using Aeolus with being able to hit a switch that like you're not supposed to with this Tornado ability. Now I have to, I need an audio cue to do this unfortunately, so I'll need a little bit of serious time. Okay, I got it. So this is... Nice. So... When you're first learning that little trick, it's actually a, kind of a tight squeeze. And I get... Ooh, yeah! Did I? Cool. And, uh, but once you get used to it, it's just really quick to do. Oh, I forgot he can hover in this game. Yep. Uh, he can hover in ZX as well. It's just not as good as ZXA's. Okay, so coming up is Voltron. Voltron, I actually think, is one of my favorite fights. And he's also, he's also a replicoid that uses sound, which I think is really neat. So there is a quick kill for him, but it, it's all determined on, A, besides landing all the shots you need, is right here when he lands, he swings his guitar at me, which is, I got it, so I can get somewhat of the quick kill. Uh, I missed the shot, though. I got a ricochet on him, so that's good. So the optimal thing to do is figure out where he spawns, run, run to the other side, jump up the wall, and shoot him. And it saves, from what I did, it saves around uh, three seconds. So, like it, pretty much, like ZX also, all, the bosses tend to just melt in this game. Unlike uh, other Mega Man games that they tend to, <laughs> and that's, that tends to be the majority of where the time comes from. In this game, the, all the movements, where all the time comes from, the bosses are like, on average, 20 to 30 seconds. So coming up next is Control Center, which leads up to the boss, Queen Bree, who's actually a really unique boss, and I really like her in this game. So to do damage to her, you have to break her hive that's on her, uh, that's on the bottom of her. Because you can't, you can't shoot her body to be, uh, by itself. So you, we'll, we'll use a neat little thing with, uh, with Atlas here in a bit. Also, you don't have to take this elevator. You can just use uh, Rose Park and just climb up it. It's it's uh, it was amazing when I learned that you could do this because I didn't even know my casual playthrough of this game. Okay, I'm gonna wait for that flame cycle. So, if anybody watched my last marathon run of this game, I got bodied in this elevator. If you're just uh, like a second slow, too slow, you can get on a really bad cycle for these flamethrowers and just get decimated. And I never knew that up until that point. And now I will never make that mistake ever again. Okay, so we have one room, and then we're going to have a neat little mini-boss coming up, which is literally just a wall of giant laser guns. But you can do a neat little trick with Atlas to kill him very quickly. Also, shoutouts to Jim Freak for teaching me the strats. Jim Freak is an awesome guy. He is currently second place for Ash. Oh, no, third place, sorry. But no, second, second, you got it yesterday. So he's currently second place on uh, for Ash. So the neat little thing you can do with Atlas here is you can just stay at the bottom and you can line up your shot and just shoot them. <laughs> All from the bottom. And it's easy, easily done. So here's the one menu of the game we'll actually have to do, and that's changing Atlas's trajectory of, of uh, her shot to go straight up. Oh, up and over a little bit. And that's going to be helpful in the Queen Bree fight up ahead. Okay, and then here's also a Buckfire wall jumping section, which I am abysmal at. 
But it's going well so far. Well, besides the one little hiccup, but that was a quick and easy mend. So here's the potential uh, Aeolus backup I might have to do, which I will have to do it, unfortunately. So, this is actually a really rough section to climb with the uh, Buckfire. I'm really bad at it, and I've even practiced it a lot. But there's a lot, of, there's plenty of people that can do it, like Jim Freak and Iki, uh, who are both uh, ZX Advent runners, can do it really easily. By the way, like, I rec if you, if you start watching ZX Advent, you, there's only like four of us that actively run the game, but you need, like, all of us, we're trying to get weekly races done and everything, and it's gonna be really entertaining. And I forgot to charge up Giga Crush. <laughs> I am great. It happens. Okay, so, here we go, I'll switch to, to Atlas, and this is just how easy that fight becomes. Because her bottom and top section for her little abdomen is uh, immune to damage, but her center isn't. And I just got... Okay, besides that, that was an amazing fight. So, every boss has a medal you can get when you achieve, like, a certain criteria. Queen Breeze is the only one that us as runners will ever get. And we don't... I don't understand the requirements for it. I've been told it multiple times, but I, I, there have always been different ones, and I don't know which one's true anymore. <laughs> but I didn't get there, so I'm trying to... I need to figure that out, out to be a little bit more consistent with that fight. So while the cut's in there, telling us uh, we need to come back to base and go to this new underground section that they've discovered that might have a, uh, the last piece of Mall W. To note, right now we have failed to collect those four pieces of Mall W that we have seen so far. So, as per as typical heroic fashion, we fail at all of our early quests, but we'll succeed in the end, right? Right? Totally. So, to get to this underground section, you have you use the abilities from every uh, boss you just got. A little, it's kind of a little check to make sure that you've done all, uh, all the areas. Also, a way it's also a good way of stopping speedrunners from sequence breaking their game. <laughs> Unless we can figure out the owl bounds, we have to actually go and do every area. So there is actually two bosses in this section. One that is coming up short uh, right after this room, who once again I kind of want to save for when it pops up on the screen for people who have not played this game. And then we'll have a kind of a re-boss fight-esque type deal. You'll see when it comes up as well. So, for people that have played this game, the spiders in this area are really annoying because you can't see them when they fall down, like fall from anywhere. So usually by the time you commit to a movement, they're already in your trajectory, which really stinks. Alright, so coming up is the first boss fight here. And what do you know, it's Vent from ZX. We're gonna fight Model ZX now. <laughs> he, is, alert. he is actually a very hard boss. Ooh, cool, I got, got, got the shit, good shot on him. Yeah. So that shot's actually really tight to make. Got him. So now we get ZX. We copy their data. ZX has a very broken ability called Z Saber, which when you jump in the air, you hold A up in the weapon attack button, you do a giant spiral. The thing is, when you do uh, when you do this attack, you don't trigger invincibility uh, invincibility frames until after you finish connecting, making it extremely efficient against bosses, and you do a lot of damage. Kind of wanted some health there, but it's fine. <laughs> I say begrudgingly. <laughs> so, and then right here is a mini boss that is familiar from ZX, the bulldozer, robot, car thing. I don't, I don't know what's name. No, that. So, thankfully, we don't actually have to like fight him if we don't want to. He kills himself at one point. But killing him is a lot faster than weighing it out. But he does have to die for you to be able to progress in this area. So we're just going to use Atlas again and shoot him from behind. 
Because I'm also at really low health. And so this is where Atlas's block breaking ability comes into play for the first, uh, after the little tutorial for him. Her. Hey. Also, when you do a fully charged, you shoot out a mine that does a lot of the damage. <laughs> so, I need to kill some few things to make sure I can get some health, which I got it, we're good. Can just avoid taking some damage, which would be nice. And now we have the second boss for this area. Because, you know, having ZX as a boss wasn't enough. Oh, I forgot to transform. As you can see, it, that does actually take a little while longer to do, that transformation. So we have Neo Spider again. But with Atlas, this fight is extremely easy and consistent, because you stand underneath them and just shoot up. Okay, so after that section, we have a little conversation with Vent that I can abruptly skip. And we get the green key card, so now we can go through all the green doors in this in this area. So we can go and fight three more bosses. Headshock, Ogle Ogle, and Body for us. Which then, that lets us get to the next area, uh, the final area. And I do not want to save, but I want to teleport. So we'll go and do Headshock and Argle Argle first. And we'll do that by tra teleporting to an area near them, which is the Ice Fields. And then going over to their area through a green door. So Can you do these two buses in any order? Yes, you can. Uh, it's faster to do what I am, what I've just been told is faster, and I'm doing now, is go to Ogle Ogle, do that section, then go back and do he Headshock, and then do Bifrost. Okay, so here's Ogle Ogle. It's two bosses at once. There's a quick kill for him using Z-Saber. I hope t I can get it. And quick kill! Nice! Nice. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> And as you can see on the bottom screen, you can see where all the transformations are. When I do the instant transformations, I'm actually selecting those down the touch screen. So, now we have the rest of, I believe it's Forest Lab, maybe? Or, or no, the Bruins, Hidden Ruins, there we go. So, Hidden Ruins is, once again, another maze-esque area, but has a neat little thing that you can use Aeolus for, is there's these waterfalls. You can use Aeolus to actually swim up these waterfalls and skip little areas, which is pretty neat. Also, I'm at really good health right now, so I can skip a few, uh, few needed health uh, grabs. Unfortunately, these guys are completely shielded, so you have to dodge them until their charge shot finishes. Also, for people that, like, maybe take a slower route, this is the fastest route in this area that I'm taking now. Oh, god, I just wanted to jump and do that, but I wasted so much time. So, those laser tr triggers, uh, pull back the spikes. Unfortunately, in this last one, you have to trigger- you have to just go through them. You need that health, and you trigger him. So, I can't trigger him and go back and get that health right there, because he'll actually despawn and have to reload his attack. Well, a little low in health, but it's kind of whatever. So, up next is our next boss, who I constantly call either Tree Boss or Arborg. I believe his name is, his actual name from the anime is Gigatonymous, uh, some, uh, I don't even, it's ridiculous. It is so silly. <laughs> you, I think it's Gigatonymous Trius or something. And, oh dang, I got stuck. Oh, that's not good. And he gave me Leafs. <laughs> so Leafs is the slowest thing he can give you. Uh, I could have actually beat him if, when he did just the vines. And there's the fastest thing he can give. Which is just he shoots projectiles out in front of him. You want that first for the fastest fight. So, just skipping a few cutscenes, and now we're going to go and fight the great and, more, and honorable Hedgehog. Definitely not a take on Sonic the Hedgehog whatsoever. <laughs> uh, the thing about his area, though, Secret Lab, is the fact that 
it's notorious for never dropping the health items that you would need at the time. So you, you want to try to not take damage through it, but sometimes you just can't help it. Secret Labs is also where Gray starts, but you do the last- Gray only does the first two sections of Secret Lab, while Ash- while when you come back for your second visit, you only do the last two sections of it. So... I really don't have too much to say in this area, so I don't know if like y'all have any donations to reload or anything, but I don't have too much to say. Except maybe curse when I don't get any health drops. We don't have any donations because we're not accepting them, but I can make some up if you want. Oh, uh, <laughs> sure. Surprise me. What you got? Okay, we got we got two million dollars from Mikuyama <laughs> saying, "Let's get some hype in the chat." See some Frank or Z. Or just some Frank or Z's. That works too. I mean, it kind of reminds me, I think we were doing a bonus stream in SGE 2013, and I, right before I left, I just said into the mic, let's get some Frank or Z. That was a very glorious moment. <laughs> Frank or Z is always glorious. Okay, so now we're up on Hedgehog. I actually didn't take too much damage, so it's not bad. Though I am going to Giga Crush, which a lot of people don't do this, but I do the Giga Crush to take some extra damage and get some invincibility frames so I don't take damage from one of his moves. Okay, Hedgehog, you're being weird, but I got you. I have not seen that string of RNG in a very long time. But you have seen it. Yes, I have seen it. <laughs> this is not saying new. But I've... I usually get, with that placement, it's usually pretty consistent that he does two shocks and then he'll do a spin uh, spin dash towards me. But he didn't do it that time, so I had to improvise. It's basically, he can't say this has never happened before. Yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. Though that weird RNG I got earlier was the first time I ever saw it, and I, yeah, that never happened before with Chrono Force. I've never seen him do double uh, time stop. Okay, there will be a cutscene here, which I'll transform out of. So now we're going to Bifrost. If you've ever played this game, Bifrost is a huge monstrosity of a monster that you can get a quick kill with ZX on. <laughs> but if you don't get the quick kill, you die instantly. So, it's also one of the most... Uh, I'm trying to think of the right word for this. The... Uh, wrong selection too. And you charge up, because Atlas is great. What I remember, he's a pretty useless um, biometal to yes, get. Yes, he is because, like, You can't move anywhere at all. Yeah, he is a horrible biometal. Okay, so... The, the area of Biolab is actually a really complex movement, and I'm already... Oh, that was... That just didn't happen. <laughs> but it's it actually has some pretty complex movement in it. And so I'm hopefully not going to be a complete train wreck like I was back in my first marathon run when I ran this game. So far it's going a little bit better. <laughs> okay, so that first room was pretty good. The second room is where is one of the longest rooms in the game and also can be extremely optimal if you do your movement correctly and you're on the right uh, strings for all the enemies. Ugh, come on, Queen Bree. So this is one of the few times we use Queen Bree again. We try our best not to use her because she is utterly useless. But this is one of those few occasions that we have to. And she's one of those biometals where you pretty much just use her for a certain key and then that's basically it. Completely useless otherwise. Yeah. So here we'll see, see the return of Thetis. And it's pretty much for the, the single reason that his underwater movement's amazing, and his vertical climb is one of the best in the game. If you can do the movement tech correctly, that is. If you can't, you don't. You shouldn't even bother using him. I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out his movement tech, and I love it so much. Also, it, even though it's really annoying to listen to. 
Yeah, the voice acting in this game is, uh, some of it's kind of questionable. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I, if we can, if we have the time after this, I actually want to play uh, Ash's start uh, intro cutscene. It is one of the most qual high quality voice acting ever made. <laughs> we are like uh, ten minutes ahead, so go for it. Awesome. Also, I oh got health drop. Never mind. We're good. <laughs> I was about to be worried about this boss fight, but not anymore. Got him. Cool. That was a pretty quick fight. It can go a lot faster. You can kill him with just a single Z Saber if you line up correctly. But uh, his in my invincibility frames wore out in uh, just before I could finish him off. So this common strategy with ZX is you do a Z Saber and then you go into a ground Saber combo. Because that actually can hit through the Z frames left, uh, the I frames left by Z Saber. So here's the one time we use Bifrost. And now we're done with him. You never see him again. Good riddance. <laughs> so, to be able to get the teleporter working to the, the last area, you actually have to go turn in the mission here, unfortunately. And there, there's, it's just a trick. It's pretty much just a flag for the game. There's not no cutscene or anything. You just have to turn it in. All, what you actually need for the teleport of the work is the data that I got from the last two bo uh, boss areas. And then Bifrost is just supposed to be the area that you find it at. So now we're in the second to last area, Volcanic uh, Undersea Volcano. We'll see the return of Chrono Force again, as he makes this next area very, 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 very easy. Also, you get here is quality uh, voice acting for Dash. So are those fireballs falling down random? Yes, all the flaming boulders that drop are completely uh, random. Which makes this guy pretty useful for it because he can't get hurt from above. Yes. So. so now this next area, we're going to switch to Thetis because it's a little bit of a vertical climb. It doesn't have a high ceiling like the other area does. So it makes Thetis a lot better. And also with his movement tech, if you don't get into a swim mode, he uh, you can attack most of the stuff before it can hit you. Unfortunately, I just accidentally went to his swim movement and I need some health as well. So I'm going to kill a few things. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't really get any health drop, but there's a there's there's a little thing on there's a little energy that's supposed to be an energy uh, pickup, which in this game you can just cut them and turn them into other items, which is very nice. I'm pretty sure you can do that in ZX as well. I don't know about Zero, however. So the optimal path is actually take the right side, and you have to fall in this very specific way not to hit any of the spikes on the side. I cannot do that yet. I've been practicing it, but I haven't gotten it consistent. So I just take this right side instead and just hope I get some health drops while I'm damage boosting through. Okay, I'm actually at really good health. So, so up next is... Oh, well, that doesn't help at all, though. Uh, whatever, I'm going to just try it. So up next is Prometheus and Pandora, who, if you played ZX is they're from the ZX game. This boss fight is literally just a copy paste of their ZX coding. It's the exact same fight in every way. Okay, that's that was a good, that was an okay fight, but I'm at really low health, so I'm gonna go safety heal up. Because this next area, which is called Ouroboros, it has a lot of spikes in it. And at 3 health, I will instantly die. So for marathon, for the marathon's sake, I'm gonna heal, I went healed up. So Ouroboros is technically a giant embodiment of uh, Model W, if I remember the, the game correctly. As you can see with the background being made up of a lot of those Model W pieces. 
So up next will be the, the boss rush, which is signature to like every Mega Man game ever made. But you don't fight any of the models, you only fight the replicoids. Which is actually pretty good, considering. And I, I also play this area a little safe, because I am known to just butcher my movement. <laughs> so, I like to be a little bit on the safe side, but of course it did not go that well. So, this is supposed to be a cutscene introducing the Bosch Rush, actually. And it introduces, like, Albert made all the replicoids and, like, has control over their spirit. Like, he gave them spirits or something and has control over them. I, it's... After a while, it got so, like, weird. This, I just didn't care about the story anymore. <laughs> I just loved, like, the movement and the fighting in this game. Huh. So I got that weird... Uh, so that's been something that I've been experiencing lately, that I'll get underneath Chrono Force and doesn't take damage at the beginning for some reason. I don't know why it does that, but... That's how you beat Chrono Force Refight. Like, just sit, sit with Thetis underneath him, spin Saber, you win. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna grab health here just just so I don't have to do so in the future. So now we switch to ZX for the rest of these. And now we have specific patterns that we want out of all, all the bosses here that are different from before. So for here, I actually love it when he the Buckfire does that. Of course, jumping away is not good. Uh, That was not good, actually. <laughs> so you're gonna so down the uh, the teleporters below actually have an invisible wall when you take the platform down that won't disappear until the platform's all the way at the bottom. But thankfully for the top ones, you can actually just wall jump up to them. They didn't think about putting that invisible wall up there as well. So now we got the Voltron refight, which is a little bit harder if you want to get a really quick kill on him. Unfortunately, I messed it up. You're supposed to take a little bit of damage when he goes into the center. So you can do a Z Saber into a triple uh, Saber attack and just fill, finish him immediately. Unfortunately, my iframes wore out at that point. So, the last boss of this room is Rose Park, who is extremely simple when you have ZX. Pretty much I'm going to say that about every boss ever. <laughs> yeah. uh, the optimal thing that you want for Rose Park is him to actually come down at least one level. If not all the way down, and then you can just combo into a Z Saber, uh, Z Saber, do the Z Saber triple Saber combo. Unfortunately, he decided to stay up. So now we go to the next Bosch Rush room, which is thankfully just two doors away. And I always go straight to Bifrost here because he's the only one that can potentially kill me. There we go. So I almost got the quick kill, but my Z-Saber actually went, ran out that time. So that was fun. <laughs> so up next is Queen Bree. So we refight her. Now, Queen Bree can potentially get out of range by the time she starts her second phase. If that happens, I need to switch to A and do a Giga Crush to kill her. Feeling when their explosion cutscenes are longer than the actual fights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she left. Also, Giga Crush can hit them no matter where they are. They don't have to be on screen. And I got the medal. That's just great. <laughs> So 
So up next is the wonderful and glorious Headshock. Oh wait, no, it's Argoggle. Uh, <laughs> ignore the last statement. <laughs> Headshock's last. I was just hoping that was done. Got a quick kill again, so that's good. Nice. Yeah, I've gotten oddly consistent at that, even though it's a lot harder than I make it look. <laughs> Okay, now we have the wonderful and glorious Hedgehog. It might, it might seem like I'm biased towards this character. That's because I am. <laughs> See what you can give me. All right. Oh, now you give me the good RNG. <laughs> All right. So that is the Bosch Rush. And looking at the time of the stream, this is also a very bad boss rush, by my standards, I should say. Uh, a good boss rush is sub an hour, when you finish it. So, uh, Kirby, if you want to take it away here, I need to focus on this next area, because I can kill myself. There isn't much to say at, the po at this point, just going to the final boss area. Oh, and yes, that is ooze blocks with spikes. Uh, this level is extremely hard when you do it on uh, normal or expert. So I'm going to use Voltron here as a little safety strat. This area is really brutal, especially casually. Yeah. I Casually, I died here at least five or six times. I know I gamed over once in a, when I did a, a race of this. Okay, so I actually had to wait to get my energy to charge up a little bit. Because here on this final boss, the first phase, which is dragons, triple A dragon, we use Chrono Force to stop time. Which, using that backup shot I do, I don't have enough energy coming in to just immediately do it. Okay, and... Prepare for me to sound like I'm masturbating. Damn. I'm, a, I'm really close to one cycle ahead. Okay, dead. So now we have Albert next. Albert, well, you think the final boss is going to be a lot harder than this one? Yeah, it's not at all. <laughs> I'm quite literally <laughs> going to Giga Crush into a Z-Saber, and then maybe have to do a triple Saber combo afterwards. Not a broken combo. Okay, and that's, that's Albert. <laughs> okay, so time is coming up shortly. I got a few cutscenes to skip. And time. Nice. So one, one oh three oh six. So one thing to say about this game, uh, RTA is actually extremely inconsistent because uh, load times are different depending on console or emulator. So we use in-game time, which I got an, uh, an hour and seven, which is for a marathon is actually a really good time. A lot of things can go wrong in this game. That's why I gave an hour and seven estimate. Because, like, my first marathon run was an hour and six minutes. Like, I barely made it under so much stuff went wrong. But I'm actually really happy with this as a marathon run and got the show. And also, thanks, uh, Milk and everybody behind the uh, DJ and Home Marathon for giving me the opportunity to show this off. And yeah, thanks, thanks for running, man. Yeah, That's on the run. And thanks, Kirby, for coming and helping me. So I'm not your internal wingman anymore when it comes to commentary. <laughs> I just ask questions, but yeah, great, hey, great uh, job. That's fine. <laughs> Did you want to show off a cutscene? Oh real quick? yes, yes. I want to show off the glorious uh, Ash cutscene at the very beginning of the game. This voice quality, this voice acting is just quality. So I'm just gonna let it play out.
Thank you, guys. Are you ready? You still don't see that Raider airship yet? We're getting jumpy. Calm down. I'll go check on the mission now. The client is the illustrious Coalition Government Legion. Some top world leaders want the help of us, a lowly hunter's guild. Do you know what biometal is? Yeah, I heard that it's some kind of cursed stone that eats human spirits. Ha! That's a good one. I bet Legion has a huge bounty on that. They say that biometal was found in some ruins. Found by those illegal hunters who don't belong to the guild. It gets better, trust me. The mission is to take back the biometal and bring it to Legion headquarters. So now that your appetites have been wet for booty, let's get this show on the road. This time, I'm gonna beat ass to the treasure. By the way, where is she? Uh, uh everyone, calm down. That voice, Ash, is that you? It was getting kind of hot in there, so I went outside to cool off. We've almost caught up to the Raider airship with the booty on it. I'm going to go ahead and meet our booty face to face. Okay, so that's pretty much the gist of the cutscene. And also, if you didn't tell, Ash's voice acting is amazing. And the fact, she, constantly through this game, she refers to almost everything as booty. Yeah, that never gets old. Yes. <laughs> So, it's it's pretty much they got, like, third-tier voice actors to do this game. <laughs> like, nobody has any inflection whatsoever. <laughs> it's so fun. Amazing. What anyway, a game. Anyways, thank you for letting uh, me this, do this run. Yeah, man. Thanks for the run, Getrith. Uh, coming up next, we have Super Metroid Project Base with Steel and Bread, so stay tuned.